In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an eBay price scraper to get the prices of a certain item and how much it has sold for in the past. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter by some listings of this script. So here's the website, and I'm going to search for uh, this here camera, and then we're going to do a few bits of filtering first. So we want to come down to here. I'm going to just click UK only just for now. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to put that in. And we go auctions as well, and I'm going to do sold items and completed items. So what that's done is that's basically just given me this page where they've all sold at this price. Um, sometimes if you search for something vague, you might get lots of different results. It's up to you. You can either take those results in and then filter them, or you can try by putting question quote marks around things like this, um, and it kind of narrows the bit. So narrows the search down a little bit. Okay, so let's just back. I'm going to copy this URL first, and then we'll our code. I'm just going to put this in here right now, so I don't forget it. Okay. So a few things we need to import first, so we need to use requests, and we also need to use Beautiful Soup, so we'll do from BS4 import Beautiful Soup. If you haven't got either of these uh, packages installed, go ahead and pick install them, nice and easy. I'm also going to use pandas for this as well, so I'm going to import that whilst we're here. So what we're going to do is we're going to write three main functions, and we're going to extract the data, pass it, and then we're going to output it. And we're going to output to CSV in this case, but like with all of the web scrapers I build, you can actually do any like the data, put it into the database, or whatever. So the first thing we want to do is uh, get the data. So let's do uh, define our first function, get data, and we're going to give it our URL. And then we need to do r is equal to requests.get, and our URL there, and say that soup is equal to beautiful soup. Can never type this word, r.txt, so we get the text value of the response. And we're going to use the HTML parser to pass this information. So what I'm doing is I'm basically writing a function that takes in our URL, goes ahead and requests the data from the page, puts, creates the soup variable, um, that we can actually manipulate and find information. I'm actually going to return the soup here like that. So now we've done that, we want to look at our next function, and I've got something wrong here, import requests, there we go. Always type something wrong somewhere. I think our next function we're going to call pass, so I'm going to say find pass, and we're going to give it the soup. So we're just going to build these functions up and then uh, test as we go. So what we want to do inside this function is we want to search for the information within the HTML. So if we come back to the page, we've already got the um, inspect element tool open this side. So if we go ahead and hover over the first item, you can see the whole thing turns blue, we can see that we get this here. So the obvious thing to do might be to try and get this list item class, but I always like to go a bit further. And um, we can see that this one has this div here. So just this one, so that could be a good shout. But I'm going to go one further, and we're actually going to go into the info part. Because we're only really interested in the text info, not interested in the picture. So we're going to use this part, but we're going to check that it's there. Okay, see it again. So that's a good, good option there for us. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to say inside our pass uh, function, I'm going to say results is equal to um, and it's soup.find or and it's div with this class that we just looked up here. So I'm just going to put that in there. Now I'm going to go and get, and I'm going to print the length of the results just to see if it is working. I'm just going to return this function. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say soup is equal to get data of our URL. So we're actually going to just test these functions now to make sure that they run, and then we can see if we've got any errors. And I'm going to say pass the soup. So down here, we've written our two little functions, and now we're going to use them. So we're going to say when we return the information out of our get data function, our URL that we're giving it, which is this one, when we return the soup, we want to store it in this soup variable here, and then give that to the pass function. So I'll run this. Maybe we have some errors. No, we don't. We've got 50 results, which could be about well, right. We scroll to the bottom, and yeah, it could be. We could absolutely be 50 results. Sometimes there's pagination on these. I'm not going to go into that on this. If you want to do um, pagination for the results that you get, you can either use page numbers to see if it's not the URL, or you can do my Amazon style approach and find the next button to click on and then take the URL from that. We're going to focus on just the results that it gives us for now because we want to be more interested in how much the items have sold for recently in case we were trying to build up some kind of either database or what we're selling for, or maybe we want to know how much stuff is worth around the house. Right so now that we've got that, we can actually start finding where the information is inside the HTML and get that info out. And this time around, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my dictionary first and then I'm going to build it up that way. You can either do that or you can scrape it first and then put it into the dictionary. But we're going to do it this way. It's, uh, it's up to you. But follow along with this, I'm going to do products is equal to, and this is my dictionary. And the information I'm going to be after is I'm going to want the title. That's my first key. Um, I'm going to ask for the price that it's sold for. I'm also going to get the sold date and the bids and also the link to the item as well so that if we want to see more information, we can get that. So now we know what we're after. We need to go and find this info on the web page and see if we can get the elements out. So we're going to go back to the top of this and we're going to use this one as our example. And if we use our selected element to inspect, we can click on the title and we can see it's here in this H3 class, which is inside this A tag. So I'm going to go ahead and get the we're going to use this one here. We're going to use the H3. This is all nice and long, so hopefully that will be absolutely fine. So we can just put that right in. But first of all, we need to loop through every item. So I'm going to do a quick for loop. I'm going to do four item in results. And then I'm just going to indent my products, which is done that first, really. I'm going to say the title is equal to item.find. So you want to search within each one of those items within that result. So you can call this whatever you like. I just need to call it item. Then just do. There's an H3 tag, and it was a class. Oh, I'll just copy that there. And we want the text from that end. So we've got .text at the end, and then put our comment there. So now we want the sold price. So let's go back to the page. Same thing again. Click on this. We can see that we have a span class positive inside this S item price. Now I've looked on this page before and I know that this is not unique. This positive one, this one will match all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just use this for the moment. I'm going to get this and then get this one because um, I'm not sure if this is going to be unique with the item, but this will work just fine. So we're going to do the same again item.find. And it was a span tag and a class. And then we want to just do dot text from that. So I'm going to put dot strip at the end of this one. Um, I'm just going to have a quick check of the. So we're going to have a pound sign in front of it. So we're going to get rid of that pound sign whilst we're here. So instead of strip here, we're going to put replace. And I'm going to remove the pound sign for nothing and I think as well there aren't any more there aren't any that are into the thousands on this item but I do believe that if you have items that have thousands you need to remove that replace the comment as well because what we're going to do is we're going to turn this whole string into a float, a floating point number so we can actually manipulate it so I'm going to just add this in as well it's quite a long quite a long string so dot replace and a comma and I'm going to put blank in there as well and then I'm just going to do dot at the end so what that's going to do is it's going to take the text from this element here and we're going to replace the pound sign with nothing we're going to replace any commas with nothing and then we're going to strip everything out and then around the whole thing we're going to turn this into a floating point number which will mean a decimal point number so we can actually treat it as a number when we analyze the data later okay so we come at the end and we'll move on to the next thing the sold date come back here we can see that it has sold 30th november so i can see right away that those two span classes here's, here's another positive one which is why we could use that before for the price
and then um, then search within the span class positive there. So we'll copy this, I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna do item.find and it was like get ready a span class of what we just copied, just move over. So what we can do is we can actually chain the find command. So now inside this one we can do dot find again, we can do span and the class was positive. Positive like that. So it's quite long and a little bit unwieldy. But basically what we're doing is we're chaining it. So we're finding this element first, and then within that we're finding that element. So if you see in the tree, we're going find this one, and within it, find this one. But you can also find this one and then index into these if you can find all, but it's much easier to do it this way. So I'm going to leave that, and we just come at the end. And the next thing we're after is the element of this. It's always useful to know if you're trying to work out how popular something was. We can see the equations right here, and this is nice and easy. Here's our span, here's our class. So item find, span, class, that. And I'm actually just going to remove this again, we don't need that. And we've got text. And the final thing is the link. So item find, and the link is always going to be an A tag. So let's just go and check how we need to reference that. Back to the link here. This is here, so what we can do, oh, here's the class S item link. We can just do that right away, that's nice and easy. Class, and then we want to get the attribute of the href. So we just use the square brackets like that at the end, just to get that href out there. So I'm just going to print this out. Products, I'm going to call it products, not products. Okay, so when we run this, I'm just going to zoom out a bit more so we can see it a bit easier. So when we run this, we've got a whole host of errors I'm going to need to go ahead and um, fix. And this is the first one here where I've missed the bracket. There we go. Right, so we've kept our running our functions down here. So I've got an error somewhere. There we go, we had our bracket in the wrong place even. Can we go to run this. Oh, would you believe it? We got it right first time. So we can see all the information popping up here. We've got the title of the product, the sold price, which we converted into a floating point number, which is really handy. The sold date, which we probably want to manipulate. I would replace this or somehow try and turn this into an actual date. But we're going to leave it like it is for now. The number of bids and the link. So now that we know that that works, we want to put all this information into a list and then turn it into a pandas data frame that we can then export nice and easily. Or if you wanted to, you could take this information and put it into a database. I have a video about storing correct info into a database. I'll link that up here somewhere on the screen. Who knows? Put my hand around it. It's up there somewhere. Or down, or down there. We're going to create our list up here. We're going to say uh, products list. I always have natural names. And instead of printing the products, we're going to do products list dot append. Products. Save that. And I'll make this one slightly bigger again so it's nice and easy to see. So my products is a product. There we go. And now we need our third and final function. So far, we've got getting the data, which returns the soup, which is our HTML code. Our passing, which then takes the soup variable and creates our list, which we just need to return out of this function here. So when we run this, it's going to return this list. So now we can do our last function. I'm just going to collapse these, which is going to be our output. And we want to give it our products list. So let's give it products list. And we're going to say um, products df for data frame is equal to pd dot data frame and capitals and we're going to give it the product list that we give it like that so when we run this function it's going to take in the list that we created from our other function our past function which is why we're returning it out here um, so we can then just do um, let's say let's do a product df dot two let's do a csv file and let's just call it um, output dot csv for now and we'll test that that works and we want the index equal to false because we do not want the pandas default index down the side we don't need it if you want it you can leave it and i tend to remove it and then i'm just going to put a print statement in i'm just going to say print and i'm just going to write save to csv and then return the function like that so that's our three functions completed. Um, we've got these two down here already. So out of our pass, our soup, we're returning a products list. So we're just going to say our products list here is equal to this. So it gets saved, the output we return here. This list gets saved in this variable, and then we can just run this here. So I've called these all the same name the whole way through. They don't have to be. I just find it easier to keep it consistent like that. And it's absolutely fine, especially when you're running uh, small programs like these. So there we go. And hopefully now let's just run that all, and we should get a complete save to CSV. Here we go, and let's just go and open that up. Here's our CSV file, and we can see that here's the names of the products, and here is the price that they all sold for. Now, obviously, these are all different items, but this is just a good idea to give you just a good idea. So that's quite cool, quite a useful thing we've got going there. Um, I'm just going to expand on this a little bit more whilst I'm here, and I'm going to say, let's create a changeable search term. Uh, if you watch my last video, I used Algpass a little bit. I'm not going to put that into this one because I feel like this one is a bit more like you would just get the data that you're after, and that would be it. You wouldn't really want to run it cons consistently or more often, but it's up to you if you want to put that in. That's cool. So I'm going to go ahead, and we can see right here, this is my search term. This is what I put into the website. So we could change this whole thing into an F string, and let's remove this, and we can see that again, the space has got is represented by a plus sign. So I'm going to put search term here, not an end, and I'm going to copy the whole URL string, and I'm going to put it into the side, into the, inside my function. I'm going to remove this, and then I'm going to create a variable here. Search term is equal to, and instead of giving this a URL, we're going to give this the search term, which in turn is going to put it into the URL here. So all we've done is we've just shifted it along down the chain. So now if I put something else in here, so let's put in Sony, I need a plus for the space, and let's put a 6400, save that, run it, and I've got errors, obviously, because I'm looking for a URL here, but we're not doing that. We're not doing search term. There we go. So now we'll run it. Save to CSV, let's go have a look at that one. Great, that seems to work. We have this other product here now. We see all the prices for that. I'm just going to close out that. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to, now I have this global variable, the search term here, I'm going to put that into my output as well, just to tidy it all up. So I'm going to give it search term as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, save into CSV, and we're going to give it the search term, and we're going to say plus uh, output.csv like that. So now when I run this, we need to give this down here. So you can see, I copied the, I'm using the same names as, as all through the whole way. I can just explain, but you can have different ones if you needed to. Um, so down here, you can see I'm giving it the product list that comes out and the search term as well from up here. So when we save this, the file name matches the search term, which is just an easier way of doing it. There's all the data, and we can see just up here it's got the search term. So we can go ahead and change this. So let's try another search term. Let's do sure uh, SM7B. Run that. Save to CSV. And here we go. There's our data. When I was testing this earlier, I did have some that didn't quite work as well. Um, so 
there's possibly some passes that this needs to be improved, but so far as for a 35 line um, script that gets quite started, it's a pretty cool way of doing it. So that's it for this one, guys. I thought you might find this quite cool, quite useful, fun little project. Um, quite handy for 35 lines of code, basically. And we're using the same principles that we do in my other videos, so it builds on all of that. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed it and found it useful.